creating your own Space Marine chapter. What was step one then? Was it coming up with the color scheme? Color scheme is the most important, the first starting point. I think if you don't have that, your army is a little bit soulless, being honest. Oh, I like painting plasma weapons. Okay, guess what? The chapter that you're coming up with, they love plasma weapons. Actually, the bit which I found the hardest, it was actually coming up with the... People tend to base their armies on their home world. Pretty much any basin you can think of would make sense. Ian said that... Should we put this in? Ian said that there are some better board games out there than like Warhammer because Warhammer is not that streamlined and it's a bit clunky. Mm. And then James said, oh, I love a bit of Risk. Is right. it the Risk board game? But yeah. actually people were like, oh, that was a good one, James. But I actually think James was serious. <laughs> risk. Well, <laughs> well, now we can get... To, are we on? Are we rolling? Yeah, we're rolling. Oh, now we can get to the bottom of No, Risk is pretty hard to play. So so you were... Dead, were you, was, were you referencing I was intentionally the... being deadpan... Sarcastic. I don't okay. think it was. I think okay. he's saying that now as like a bit of a cop out. No, Classic not. deadpan, sarcastic James. Yeah. Oh, look. Okay. What he's known for on this podcast. <laughs> you weren't on that episode, so I had to make up for it. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, like, true, so, yeah. so, someone, yeah. had to, someone had to step in. I had to step in. up. Come on. Do you get worried when you're not on the show? You're like, oh, what if they like enjoy this person way like more, than me? more than me? It's like 50%. Um, my ego doesn't <laughs> want them to, but then my. Uh, like me not wanting to, like me wanting to get more stuff done <laughs> instead of recording this does want me to because then I'm like, oh, that maybe, maybe Ian can be the permanent host instead and then yeah. I can get some more emails done or something like that. Um, yeah, I think I, I do. Um, I, I actually really like it when I'm not on it because I get to listen to the podcast. You're a fan of the show. I'm a fan of the show. First time, no, long time listener. <laughs> long time host, first time listener. Time listener. First time listener yeah. um, so I get quite excited when I when I when when there's one without me on it, mm. as I'm sure will be echoed in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, final reminder, just a quick little PSA for everyone. Uh, if you're watching this episode when it comes out, we will be at UK Games Expo this Saturday. So if you see us there, please come and say hi. We've got sticker packs. We would love to meet you. Yeah, Saturday and, uh, the 1st. Yes. So if you're, if you're sitting there. 1st of June. It's the 3rd. Yeah. You've missed out. Not yeah. June. We had a great time. June. We had a great <laughs> yeah, time. Thank you, James. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that clarification. Every time someone mentions the month of June. Yeah. Um, Never going to live that down. Uh, we, uh, yeah, well, if, you're, if you're listening past the 1st, then you're too late. Um, we had a great time without you. <laughs> so, um, just to clarify it will be me George and James there not Paul George and James <laughs> not Ian George and James um, it will be me so yeah. I will have stickers as well though <laughs> it's either good news or bad news if you're a listener really, isn't it? yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, the the big the big Paul fans are probably going I think so. yeah, we'll get, we should get stickers of Paul so that <laughs> so I have to give out stickers <laughs> yeah. of Paul yeah. yeah you could get like like a drawing of the the team, like you know when people get like caricatures of the hosts or whatever put onto a logo, but you just never get me on it. <laughs> one of the main hosts. Uh, third wheel in your own podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, final little announcement. It's been a year, a year of pain perspective. Not oh, not to the day. I think we're like a couple of days over. Couple of days but... over. Yeah. Feels longer, doesn't it? It's dragged. <laughs> <laughs> No, been, nice I wonder point. how many hours it is of us chatting. It's probably getting on now, isn't it? These are what, like an hour and 20 a week? Yeah. You're on 52 of them? 52. That's too much, some would it say. It feels like, yeah, it's, oh, what have we done? No. Putting that into the world. But the, the, the initial ones were shorter. Yes, that's well. true. They were, yeah. Um, I think it's hour. since episode 12. So there's like a good 40 episodes worth that are longer than an hour. Yeah. I think one of my favourite sort of backhanded compliments we get is when people say they prefer the, the old ones <laughs> <laughs> when they were shorter. Um, yeah. Yeah, but uh, it's interesting because it's episode 52, so that is like on the nose yeah. a year, one a week. But I was saying that there'd been some weeks where we'd uploaded there's, two. There's one time that we missed a weekly upload, and that was early on because of scheduling. And we made up for it by the fact that we had Adam Skinner do an audio exclusive episode. Yeah, so it evened And we out. released two that week, so yeah. we evened it out. So it evened it out. So bang on. So we've been pretty consistent, I would say. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the percentages is for podcasts that last this long, but I imagine it's quite low. That's good. Um, so well done. Well done to us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Well, one thing I wanted to ask you, Joe. Yeah. What's happening with the Marines Army? I got a bombshell to drop. No. 
This has been a lot. Uh, you've, there's been, what did James call it? There's been grum, grumblings, grumblings, whatever he said. Yeah, yeah. So I've been going back and forth. And the last time we properly discussed it on the podcast, it was actually me talking about potentially coming up with a custom chapter, which has led us to what the topic of this episode is going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, however, um, I actually settled on not doing a custom chapter. I decided I was overthinking it. Um, Fair. Much like the tripod I was moaning about before we started recording. <laughs> I was over-engineering a simple solution. Okay. Hang on. I'm, I'm getting premonitions here. I was, over, I was overthinking it. And what I should have done the entire time. He's chosen blood angels. Was go along with <laughs> the advice I gave George. Uh, all those episodes ago. To choose Blood Angels, obvious choice, Joe. Yeah. Glad you the, could join us. The clear answer, the clear choice is to obviously just do Dark Angels, isn't it? I mean, that's fair. That's the best. Fair. I don't know that's fair. That's fair. We're the, still 2v1, George. I mean, come for, on. Like, for it's fine. All, if you want my reasons, just go back and listen to any argument we ever had. Wasn't about you telling to me to do a custom chapter? Uh, I think, <laughs> yeah, because it was half red, red half green. Do you yeah. know what, though? I think I was telling you to do a custom chapter because I'd already lost you. Right. You were already not doing Dark Angels. That was your last life. hope. So I thought, I'll try and rope him into at least... That was your last Hail Mary chapter. effort. Yeah. To get some and green on a also model. I it's not Obi-Wan Kenobi. I mean, uh, come on. Also, like. I hadn't looked at the rules yet, and I still thought the custom chapters held weight in, with regards to picking and choosing chapter tactics and things like that. That's not as much the case now. Um, I'm not going to talk any more about the rules, because every time we talk about the rules, someone comments saying... Oh, we know nothing about they the rules. They don't know anything about the rules. Um, Newsflash, it's not about the rules. It's yeah. About, it's about painting. Yeah, yeah. The the three painters who haven't played the game, they don't know yeah. anything about the rules. I'll shot. get onto so, this later. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, it's um, it's going to be Dark Angels. I mean, um, fair. That makes sense. Uh, the thousand point list is written. Oh. The build has begun. Uh, just planning out the the recipes and things. That you know what's going to happen, James? He's going to overtake both of us and he's going to have a finished army before either of us. It's not going to happen. Well, yeah. Three colours, three base colours, done. Tournament ready. To be honest, just if you build all of yours, you'll be ahead of me. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, yeah, I'm kind of at that decision, that decision stage now where I want to plan ahead and be like, okay, infantry to this sort of level and, mm-hmm. and things like that. And I know that's not, the way that I think a lot of the comments on the Ian episode actually were, we get it. We got it on the Peachy episode. We got it on the, on Ian's episode as well, where like people um, were kind of poking fun a little bit at like the high end painters and the the competition painters because they they don't ever get to paint a full army properly and things like that because um, they think about it different and that's not the point to push yourself on everything and blah blah blah. Which obviously. Currently, this podcast is leaning into that stereotype, unfortunately. But, um, <laughs> well, I, th- I think the thing is, even if you choose lesser stages, like you can still paint what you paint on the model as best and as sharp and as neat as you can. So yeah, you can still of course, paint of one course. highlight on. I- I'm getting more at like, I think, yeah, I, it, not that I want to be like, oh, I'm going to paint a full box art army, but I still want to outline some um, quality uh, Parameters. levels. Yeah, 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 t- yeah. so that I know when I'm done on certain units and I know that I'm going to be happy with certain units. I think, I think like Joe's that. right though, because I said that I was going to do mine of like a nice high level, but not like full beans. And then I just got too excited painting the models and just gone down the rabbit hole. Went yeah. full beans. There was a specific comment that I read last week. And I think, I don't know if you would have pulled it or not, but I think it was intended to be like half jokey, but half like it felt like a bit like they were um, almost glad to see us like, you know, someone get one up over us when, oh, is that, was yeah, it, you pulled it? Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll get to that in a sec. But that was what made me think about it. And I was like, yeah, it's an interesting point. And I think I'm kind of somewhere in between. From the conversation we had with both Ian and Peachy now, I'm at the point where like ideologically, I'm 100% on board. Trust me, it would be so much easier if I was physically capable of just painting my models and getting them finished and not going 100,000%. Hmm. But we've, the other like devil on my shoulder is we've spoken about just enjoying the hobby and doing what you enjoy and having as much fun as possible because it's your hobby. And whenever I sit down to paint, the way I seem to enjoy it is just by attacking it as hard as possible and yeah. doing yeah. the best I possibly can. Well, I think that where I'm at at the minute is in terms of being happy to game with something, I think I'm going to try and work out a process in which 
I can get like base colors and shading all done on everything mm. so that I can then be happy to game. And then you those. can add to it whenever you want. Yeah, you and then, so it, as long yeah. as I can get to that stage, I can then add highlights well, exactly, yeah. as and when I want, yeah. uh, which, yeah. I'll, which I'll be happy with. That's so. a good way of doing that's, it. That's the best yeah. way. Yeah. Well, I kind of alluded to it, but uh, got a bit of a bit of an update, bit of an announcement. Are you are you sitting down? You are, aren't you? Two shoulder pads. I finished two of my stand guard models. Full models. Full models. They'll be on screen for people. So that brings me to a grand total of three models strong for my Blood Angels army. Oh, we're nearly, we're nearly, very nearly entering kill team territory we're almost entering double digits worth of points yeah not, not that careful. you can not that you can use stone guard in kill team i don't think again please no rule <laughs> comments, please uh yeah finish them up i've got two more on the way just got to finish the sub assembly the arms uh oh, they're nearing done that you would have been done if you didn't sub assembly <laughs> uh yeah so i'm officially ahead of james by my by my metrics i, think. I, I had on, s- on in terms of what though because uh, we're finished gonna, models we're gonna get the yeah but what army that's because, a good, well, that's another point, which yeah, I think we'll get to later. We'll get on to that shortly. I mean, <laughs> I would be, all cards, I would be more ahead if I wasn't painting for MPO a couple of weeks ago. So so if I weren't painting for that, I would be in a much more virtuous position with numbers and models finished. I mean, look, um, it's no, I, I can't comment really, but I feel like I haven't seen a Maudian update in a while. It's been a minute, hasn't it? Right. Do you know what he was talking about? Do you know, saying, do you know he's got like, side, he's got, if I'm not mistaken here, he's currently got a side project for his side project, side project. And yeah. that's actually accurate. Yeah. He's got is. the Mordians, I pimp my ride. which he's, he's pushed off to the side and he's then started the other project, which will be, we'll get to later. That's the topic of this episode. And then that, he had an offspring of that, which is back to his primary Blood Angels. Yeah. Looped back round again. Yeah. yeah. I'll so, talk I mean, about it. It's fine. <laughs> this I, is why... This is why I say just do whatever you feel like doing in the moment. And this, this whole thing of like, oh, putting myself under pressure and setting deadlines and having to have this done doesn't really necessarily work because you're just going to find something else you'd rather do. Well, so. do you know what? Like, I thing was, is like, I have shelved a couple of, I say shelved, I've parked. That means I'll be returning to it because I wouldn't just park your car somewhere. Are they on a shelf then. or are they um, in a car park? They're on a painting desk, so they kind of a big shelf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I, I wanted to make sure that I uh, went to a competition for the first time ever and wasn't painting A, the night before, or B, in the hotel the night before, or C, the morning of said competition, and I achieved that goal. So I, was I, don't, I don't think we've spoken about MPO, actually, because we, uh, we had a guest last week. Do you want to just rewind the listeners and talk yeah. about your, uh, your experience, James? Yeah, think? it was really good. Uh, so uh, Andy and the rest of the guys at Cult put on the uh, Minch Painting Open, so MPO in Bristol, which is uh, the physical version of their online uh, MPO uh, painting competition, which is great. Um, it's the first one they've done, um, and it was great. It was absolutely fantastic. Like, really, really, really well presented, ran smoothly like clockwork. Um all the models were amazing. You could literally, the way they were presented, they weren't cabinets. It was all on, on shelves that Matt had made, which which was brilliant. I saw that um, in, in the pictures and I thought that yeah. looked very good. It was I, really good. I, just yeah. knowing, yeah, imagining the difference between looking at them in that situation versus looking at them in a cabinet with lights and glass in the way, whatever. Yeah. Like, that does seem like it's brilliant. Really way good. to go yeah. for me. Yeah. It was. It's really easy. And uh, the good thing is, obviously, you can just see them there. As And the good thing is, they were under a lot of lights, which they're painted under. So you see them as they are when they're painted, which is quite Yeah, good. as they're intended. Um, so, yeah. So I presented loads of models, um, some new, some old. Uh, and it was good. It was really good. So it was great. Any actually. awards? Yeah. So I managed to get a bronze in standard, which was really good. So I was really over the moon with that. I haven't picked up anything in quite some time. So, so that's, yeah, that's been nice. really, really good. Is it giving you like a bit of a boost? Yeah. It's like the first step on the ladder again, a bit of a boost to actually get around and actually dedicate some time to. So painting so I can enter competitions and not be frantically painting half finished thing before entering it like I used to. Um, it's interesting as well because you just said you haven't won anything in some time. Not that you've had loads of competitions in, in between those things, but this was the first one where you felt properly prepared and yeah, finished everything. It was, it was amazing. And, and then you also and, managed and to win something. And you won. It was, so the, it's like, it was the best. Connect the dots there. It was, it was um, the best. Don't the hotel the morning of. It's 100%. It was the best situation ever. So yeah, so it was really good. I got, um, yeah, so I got a bronze for my um, my second Ed's Primaris Blundell Captain. You know, I'm with the yellow fist with a half red, half yellow thumb. Mm. It's on screen um, for the listeners. If you're uh, so on YouTube. I, I was like over the moon 
over the moon to, to that. It's a really, really awesome figure that I enjoyed painting. And, uh, and yeah. Is that from the Space Marine Heroes? Just Darren, yeah. 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 Uh, not Just Darren. Strike yeah, just, Force Just Darren? Yeah, Strike yeah. Force Justian, Justian or Just Justian. Darren. Yeah, so it's, the kill team thing. Yeah, so it's, it's him, um, which is good. So I really enjoyed that. And then a couple of the other team, uh, like Cy, um, Simon picked up a couple of silvers and bronzes, which are silvers and golds, which was great um, in standard. And also Connor, who's new to the team, picked up a gold as well. So that was really good. Nice. So yeah, it was, it was awesome. So yeah, it was brilliant. Very cool. Cool. Should we do the uh, the listeners' comments? Mm-hmm. Uh, CEO says uh, Arbiter Ian dropping truth about getting an army painted on the painting professionals is this, wonderful. Yeah, this is the one I was referencing. I figured as much. And I'm like, I don't know if that's just like funny or if it's genuinely like someone thinking, yeah, he's telling them. <laughs> um, but either way, I, both, think, I think I think it's like. Um, it's just a bit like there's no real. It's one of them things where it's no real right or wrong. No, of way, course it's it? not. It's no, your, it's not. End, it's your no. end goal. I think it's in good fun. That it's, comment. It's the 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 insinuation that we wouldn't otherwise think that you could just paint your army however you want, kind of thing. Yeah. Like, like we think that the only way to paint an army is to do everything to like box art quality. It's just not true. Is if it? anything, that's our curse. Yeah. Like, it's not a. It's not a sought after trait. If I could just paint stuff to tabletop level and just be done with it, trust me, I would I would happily do that. That nig always burns too hard when you look at it and you're like, I can just yeah. do six more stages. You, you get in <laughs> very close to, oh, I wish my, oh, I hate it when my blends are so smooth or whatever you said that one time. <laughs> <laughs> Tread carefully when you're like. You've really you're taken like, that comment. And I just stretched loved it. it so much. I just it. loved it so much. It was like, oh. Oh, I just hate. Can't I mean, do spend better all, than that. Spend like, all this time on a perfect blend. It just looks like there isn't even a blend there. It's just, oh. So that's one color. Yeah. And then I'm doing one. It's just like, it's just like two colors next to each other. A solid line down the middle. I'm like, yeah, I hate it. Oh. Yeah. No, but I thought that episode with him was interesting because his approach and ultimately the goal that he done for his miniatures for the purposes he used them, it made total logical sense. Like it, he even said, look, you know, painting something. It, completely in a different way as in like box art or like as best as he can is such a weird strange thing for him but like I think he's quite open to actually doing that as well from the conversation yeah he said he wanted he had, to, so. to do some higher end stuff I think that he would like it's a trade off isn't it if you want to get stuff done quicker and faster unfortunately it's not going to look as good I'm just, just it's not it's not yeah, a loaded that's, comment that's, it's that's just reality the decision made going in exactly like, yeah, it's not like a no 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 of course I'm just saying there has to be a trade off there like you can't really have both um, and by his own admission, he, Ian wanted to perhaps push himself and try the other side of things. Um, in an equal sense, like obviously, I mean, me and James painted loads of stuff for commissions. Like obviously, we are capable of doing that. As a line, yeah. The whole, po- the whole point of the whole situation and the reason why we paint the way we do is because that's how we enjoy the hobby. Yeah. Um, in the same way that I wouldn't enjoy the hobby by playing loads and loads and loads of games and doing no painting. I wonder if there's this like assumed um, like prejudice almost, the way like people people who don't regularly paint to a high standard mm. maybe assume that people that do will instantly look at their army that isn't fully highlighted and be like, oh, what a load of rubbish. Yeah, that's completely when, like, That isn't the case at all. No, I don't think I've nonsense. ever met a painter who, who... I don't think I've ever met a painter who, in our circles, that doesn't just think of it in a way of like, Oh, that's cool! You painted a full thing the way you wanted to paint it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Stuff can still look that's great without being like objectively more time spent or objectively higher level. Even if it did, like, I'm, I'm still saying, like, even if it didn't look great, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, even, yeah. it's just cool that we're all sitting here and painting these things, and exactly. And you got if, if your goal was get some paint on it and game with it, mm-hmm. then that's just as cool to me as oh, you won a competition. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I, I think that that little that prejudice that. <laughs> doesn't really exist like but i feel like sometimes people think it does yeah. possibly uh i'm talking as if i'm one of the high quality painters <laughs> by the way but i'm just like in in the, that can, circle like, now you that's can all, paint joe they're all a chat to so it's, yeah yeah okay uh going back to a couple of episodes ago where we spoke about uh the vallejo paints uh regular bear says uh the vallejo paint names being confusing is a bad take what color is that Warg flesh versus what color is that flat green? Now, I, I just want quickly. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, this, the comments on this episode are wild. Are like, I don't think people could miss the point more. I, I, I don't know agree. if we didn't explain yeah. it properly, maybe. But Possibly. 
like this kind of comment as well is just completely misses the point of what I think we were trying to say. But go ahead. The the point that I was we was all trying to make, I think, in that conversation, particularly myself, was the reason I said the Vallejo paint names are bad is because one, they overlap with their other paint ranges and the paints don't match. So for example, green in model color, you know, intermediate green or whatever is different than the paint of the exact same name in Vallejo game color. So that irritates me because you've got two paints with the same name that are completely different. So you can easily make a mistake. Second one being, when you've got paints that are so unbelievably vague named, when you scale that up, it makes it very, very difficult. The reason I like Citadel's paint names isn't because they're accurate to what they are, but once you learn them, it's easy to go from memory as to what that paint word is. Asso- word association. And you make the word association. When I've yeah. got like a billion different greens, and this one is like light green, light medium green, light red saturated, like it just gets so ridiculous. And when you've got people actually said like, oh, you can tell like they don't have many paints or they don't try loads of paint ranges. The fact that I do have loads of paints and the fact that I do try loads of paint ranges is specifically why it makes it so frustrating. Trust me. Because all of them have the same names. Yeah, I think the point that was missed from a lot of people was that we weren't saying that the name didn't accurately describe the Yeah, it makes sense, yeah. Um, Like people were like, well, it's called German uniform because it matches the color of German uniform. Yeah, we know that. Like, and I get that, but yeah. like, there's there'll be another color called uniform German or something. Yeah. It's like that. That's the bit that doesn't help. Whereas, like, I almost prefer that the Citadel names aren't something that I can instantly understand what associate they are. a specific color because with. because yeah. that way I don't have any preconception of what that color is exactly going to be. Mm-hmm. I just know that that is what that color is. Like, it, like while flesh, uh, you know, without looking at it, I'm not going to know what that, you know, some minor Warhammer knowledge will tell you that it's probably green. But other than that, I don't know what type of green it is. So I don't have any preconceptions. Whereas if I get told to to pick up a color called uh, pale green, like you say, or, or whatever other co- green colors they've got, um, I've then got a preconceived notion of what that color should be. And sometimes it isn't exactly that. Or And when or, you start, when you extrapolate that to having, say, three or four paint ranges from three or four manufacturers, and they're all doing that, where like they're all called flat green or intermediate yeah, green. That was the main point, it wasn't it? It gets really confusing. That the names were confusing within each other almost. Yeah. Like it, it wasn't that the color doesn't accurately describe, that the name doesn't accurately describe yeah. the color. I and guess. a point I actually made in that was, I think the people who nailed it the best is the new Fnatic paints from Army Painter because they have a unique name on them, mm. but equally on the side of the bottle, it has a descriptor. Of what it is. Of yeah. what it is. So it'd be like, say, I'm just pulling this out of thin air, but say it's called like Emerald Green. You know, Emerald Green or whatever. Mm. It would say on the side of it, you know, a uh, rich. medium rich green, something yeah, like that. Yeah, like it, yeah. would, it would have a descriptor for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the problem is once you get so far into having a, a range, um, it, I imagine it would take quite a lot to almost relaunch and, and streamline yeah, yeah. Vallejo's range. And there's probably no major need for it, but um, we still like really like the paints. Yeah, like, paints I'm not yeah. using no, them, no, no, rubbish no, names. No, no, complaints like on the paints. No, no complaints on the paints at all whatsoever. And believe me, I, I have a lot of paint. So yeah. uh, I, I've tried a lot of ranges. So... Yeah, it's got nothing to do with We're that. We're selling the episode. It's one of the most consistent paint ranges I, I love from it. any I, manufacturer. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. One of the, I think it's one of the one of the best top performing ranges out there. Okay. Uh, Shoreless Skies says, part of the magic of fantasy and sci-fi, starting with Tolkien, of course, is the way that it tickles our imaginations. This is especially so when things are left mysterious. Warhammer in general, either by design or sheer incompetence, has tons of these little mysterious corners of the law. The fact that you can go and then make a tangible thing with such a fictional nugget and then play a game with it is the magic of Warhammer. Lovely, lovely comment. What was that in actual like relation to? What was spoken about on that episode that that prompted that? I think we were just talking about how there can be like small little things that are just sort of glossed over in some of the novels and then later either fans will like pick up on it and like turn it into a whole thing mm. and then it might later get some like official backing or equally the fact of you can be, you can come up with like your own Space Marine chapter from this tiny little subtext that was just glossed over in the back of a novel. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. It's one of the, the one of the 
most appealing things about fantasy think, and stuff like that, isn't it? Like headcanon stuff, like yeah. coming up with your own stories and stuff. I think the vagueness gives the gap for someone to breed creativity. Like there's a region, the reason why the second and the 11th legions in 40k or 30k don't exist, you know, it's just so you can say, oh, they come from this kind of direction or whatever. So you can do your own. Yeah, it gives you that. Yeah, yeah. So I think but, yeah. some of it is, um, the, I mean, the second and um, what was it? Second and 11th. Second and 11th. Yeah. Um, the Primark things. Like yeah. that. that's an interesting one because I think that's probably more of a long term marketing decision than it is a freedom of uh, letting everyone create stuff decision. Because mm. I feel like when you have this huge universe, maybe initially, very initially, it was that. But I think the reason they've held on to it is more from a down the line. Uh, break glass if, in case of emergency. <laughs> we need a big story. Yeah, we're going to reveal one of them, kind of thing. Possibly, um, maybe. Yeah. I think it's clever. I think it's uh, it's probably not incompetence as much as the, <laughs> the, the comment would suggest. But because um, I don't think you actually necessarily need that to encourage um, people creating their own stories within Warhammer. I think the thing is so fleshed out. Now. Well, well, they have it anyway. I mean, like you've got like the the, the obviously the first founding, you've got the second founding, you've got the cursed founding. So like, there's loads of different foundings of like. We talk about Marines in general here, but like there's loads of different foundings which allow you to have that flexibility and, and creativity. Like there's loads of offshoots, like a tree where everything goes in different directions and you can just choose one of those paths and run with it, you know? Like, it's like, the fun of having a universe at such a large scale, isn't it? Because it's completely conceivable that literally anything you make up could, ha could happen could because happen, it's yeah. literally a galaxy worth of planets and people. Yeah. Whereas if you've got this, you know, universe in a bit more of a vacuum where you've got like, you know, even if it's on one planet, you're kind of, limited with how plausible things can get yeah i feel like a lot of people don't even necessarily realize the, the scale of the warhammer universe and the stories that are being told how far apart some of these stories are from each other yeah. like, in terms of like physical distance and distance time. yeah like yeah. and stuff like that like i mean if you say like coming up with your own like lord of the rings or sorry middle earth like lore and canon stuff while you've got like a very very big timeline there you are put in this limited vacuum of space aren't you of Middle Earth is the setting and we know the main factions and countries within that realm and yeah. we've got this established storyline. Yeah. So you kind of have to like make things that plausibly make sense within the fringes of it. Mm. You can't just like come up, it, it would be a bit nutty to come up with like your own wizard who's like 10 times more powerful than Gandalf. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or zebra yeah. people or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Like, you know, so. I feel like that's what happened with like the Marvel films. Like they, they had this like great outline at the start for mm. the whole first lot and then it was like oh but now we need to do somewhat something like more powerful but it also doesn't make sense that none of them have ever mentioned it before <laughs> do you know what i mean yeah. like that sort of thing um yeah it'd be the same kind of thing you'd be like oh well my you know gandalf the blue yeah. or whatever <laughs> like it's a different version um can't wait for someone in the comments who's read the salmarillion to rip me apart on why that's perfectly yeah right. i but, don't yeah I, yeah i'm not again not, not mention a huge best wizard, wizard the, the mushroom smoking eating Radagast the Brown. No one mentions him. Everyone forgets about him. Yeah. It's more of a Hobbit thing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Still no, I'm wizard. Not. I'm going to shock well, you. He's in the say, Hobbit movies. Yeah. I haven't seen the Hobbit movies. Yeah. Good. <gasps> what? <laughs> yeah. Good. They're terrible. Yeah. Because of that, basically, yeah. everyone, not yeah, everyone good. always told me how bad they were. So, yeah. Worth a miss. Yeah. Uh, we've had a review. Ooh. Uh, thought give us one that was shout out. Uh, PT Lax via Apple Podcasts says, the Perfect Painting Podcast, five star. Why would you rate it any less? Let's mm -hmm. be honest. Uh, I'm so glad I found this podcast. Every episode is unique where I can skip around to what topics I like. Turns out every episode is great. I find myself listening in the car while painting or just lounging around. The best part of the show isn't that I get tons of useful tips or ideas, which I do, but that I get so inspired by uh, to paint by listening. Thank you. Oh, that's good. That's what you want. Yeah, I do. love that. Thank you very much. Yeah. If you would uh, please do us a favor and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, any audio platform that you've used, that'd be greatly appreciated. And we will read our favorite ones out on the show. We frequently hear from you with questions asking how you can paint like our team of world-class and award-winning artists. Teaching is something that all of the team here at Siege are very passionate about. And we want to share with you the methods and techniques that we use to paint every single day all of the incredible miniatures and armies that you have seen from us. With the Seed Studios Patreon, you'll gain access to a growing catalogue of over 300 step-by-step -step tutorials covering a huge variety of colour schemes, miniatures, painting styles and techniques 
from beginner-focused foundation tutorials to full character masterclasses. Each lesson comes in a beautifully designed and easy to follow PDF format with accompanying artist commentary with new tutorials added every single week. Your subscription also includes access to our private patron channels on Discord so that you can interact directly with our artists asking for questions or feedback. You'll also be supporting the podcast directly, helping us to bring you these episodes every single week. So if you want to take your painting to the next level and make the most of your very valuable hobby time, head over to patreon.com forward slash siege studios. Topic for this week, creating your own space marine chapter. Now we have, uh, we've done many custom schemes over the years at siege. Uh, I think all of us have dabbled a little bit as well in our own like custom chapters. We've done some previous, uh, painting challenges, especially on the podcast. And, uh, we, we didn't speak about James's current projects too much in the preamble because James, well, somehow James has wrangled his way into getting a whole episode about him and his, and his chapter that he's chosen. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. I didn't angle it or tailor it in any way. This all started <laughs> with the discussion that we mentioned earlier about my custom chapter that I was coming up with. And James had some suggestions that he liked so much that he has now decided to do a custom <laughs> chapter and I'm not. I like, I like the creation aspect of making a new chapter. And like when you came in and said, like, I want to do my own chapter because I want to use whatever rules, et cetera. And let's not get into rules, but, um, yeah, my, I, my, the cogs started turning and, mm. and it just, it, unfortunately it was like, you know, when a snowball starts at the top of a mountain and it just rolls and gradually, yeah, it was kind of like that. I kind of like, I was like, well, you could do yeah. this, or you could do this, or you could do this. And it's then so it, unlike James to get carried away with something as well. Yeah, I know, it's really normally, surprising. Normally so reserved. I'm very passionate, <laughs> very passionate. So very, very passionate. But um, but yeah. Um, so every time he's been saying something, I've been like, hold it, stop, stop, because we're gonna do, we'll do an episode on creating a chapter because we do also actually get asked about this a lot. Yeah, we do. We even have people email in like an inquiry form mm -hmm. and. It's not for us to paint their models for them. It's for us to come up with a color scheme and uh, come chapter. up with a chapter for them, which yeah. is not is not a service we offer, I'm afraid. However, we're instead now gifting you this guide yes. for free. Yeah. Um, so you're going to have a full walkthrough. Yeah. And then if you do come up with your own chapter, feel free to commission some models. <laughs> <laughs> okay, James, uh, walk us through from the start. So Joe, Joe says, I'm starting a new Space Marines army. I'm not sure on colors. Yeah. Where did it go from there? So I, uh, I, we, we talk about many times in conversation on different episodes about, uh, about Paul Norton's Iron Ravens um, and how that whole entire chapter was created by Paul, all the iconography. And, and the thing I really like about it is that it's a metallic scheme so that you have uh, that metallic color and then you can add accent colors to suit for different, uh, for different units or different ranks or, or, uh, maybe some specialist troops in the army or something like that. It allows you to do the tanks in a different way to the, maybe the infantry. So that was kind of like when you first spoke to me, I was like, why don't you, why don't we, you do like a metallic schemed army? That'd be like, yeah, I know. think, I think we have heralded the Iron Ravens as the benchmark, the best possible example for a custom space marine chapter mm -hmm. that is fleshed out and has you know, it feels like a legit chapter. It actually is now a legit chapter mm -hmm. uh, as far as I'm aware. Um, but also is designed with the painting in mind of a way to, that you can get through an army and make it look an extremely high level. Mm -hmm. um, without, without, yeah. yeah. I mean, quickly in, in, quote marks i guess everyone it quickly is going to be different for everyone but reasonable yeah. more reasonable yeah. definitely we've done an episode called how to paint uh, your army faster and better um i'll link it in the description of this if you're watching on youtube and one of the main things that we said in that was how metallic schemes can be very very high impact look fantastic and be a very very low time investment yeah, really rewarding for how little effort yeah can can go into them um but also scope to push them further yeah. as as with the iron ravens uh, a lot of the the models that you see paul's done for those mm -hmm. yeah. um so yeah that we, we've spoke about that a lot so i think that was the initial spark wasn't it for you it was yeah because i was like wow like a, you know metallic schemed army be really good to do that you can do loads of things with it. i started having loads of ideas and all this kind of stuff and that's kind of like where the like with any idea for a new army or new project that's kind of like where where the the hill presents itself and you can't stop yourself you know when you go down a hill and you like you feel the gravity pulling you down as you lose it that's exactly as it was i was like oh i'm on this roller coaster now i can't stop so just imagining so, james like as an adult like, <laughs> rolling walk, down the hill. walking down the hill and going oh my god i can't stop <laughs> <laughs> just keep going. yeah 
<laughs> yeah, so that that's kind of like how this ill-fated journey begun. Um, well, it's not ill-fated. Well, not ill-fated, no. It was like... It haven't started in, in, it yet. In, Jesus. In, <laughs> inadvertent. Let's put it that yeah, way. There's a better yeah. word. Yeah, inadvertent sort of like start to a project. Um, it's a good thing you didn't want to do Dark Angels, really, because I don't know if he would have let you do this, uh, this custom skin. Yeah, it's a good job I didn't go... This is perfect. It's, the, it's my most favourite thing ever. I'm, yeah, you've nailed it, James. It's Cheers. mine. It's yeah. mine now. And you're never allowed to talk about it or, d- or paint it. I did try um, and go a bit hard with it because I was like, I, I, we could do so many cool things with it. And um, and yeah, so. Uh, we have spoke kind of semi-regularly over the years of being like, oh, it'd be cool to do like a siege chapter or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, we have mm-hmm. spoke about that before. So it's always been... On the cards. On your mind, I think, yeah. isn't it? So so what was step one then? Was it coming up with the colour scheme? Was it coming up with like, the idea in the background? Where can someone start if they're looking to start their own Space Marine chapter? I think there's multiple locations that you can start the process in. It could be the idea for a character or it could be the idea for a colour scheme. Uh, or, I think for, for you with this, it was the colour scheme. It was though, the right? colour scheme, you, yeah. You were saying you looked at Iron Ravens yeah. and you were like, okay, I'm going to come up with a metallic color scheme. Yeah. I think that, that was the thing. I, I I love what Paul's done with those. And I think it's a really good, uh, good use of kind of like the, the metallic scheme plus with colors. And I thought I'd love to do something akin to that in a homage to it. Um, you know, and I will always say that, um, so that, so that that way we could do something that's, that's maybe for somebody that, doesn't want it that doesn't know where to start could potentially look at it and go i like that and i'm gonna potentially give that a go because it's all laid out for me but if you are starting and, and doing your home and then i think yeah like picking the starting point be it a color scheme or coming up with a character you know i i, I think personally color scheme is the most important the first starting point purely because you're gonna have to sit there for ages and paint that um and and I think that that kind of starts breeding the heritage and the uh the, the story of the chapter is their color scheme, why they are that color, you know, what other markings they have, you know, um, how they distinguish different types of units potentially in the army and things like that. I think that's something that is a really important foundational point when it comes to deciding upon a chapter. So that's kind of like where we started. We, we, we chose a color scheme and conveniently we have fortunately been approached by Colorforge to create our own spray cam. Now, so this is the signature series with Color Forge, which is a bunch of creators, including Siege. Yeah. And this, I guess, worked out conveniently time-wise because it's kind of overlapped with coming up with the chapter. The stars yeah. aligned, um, yeah. to, to, to put it in a way. Yeah, so we, obviously, the guys at Color Forge got in touch with us and asked us, would we be interested in doing this? We'd love to either way, like whether it was coming up with like a like a, a, a own can for this specific thing we're talking about, or if this hadn't been on the cards, I'm sure we would have done something else. But a lot of people, do you want to just explain the color? We haven't even, you haven't said the color yet. So yeah, we have. Color, you landed on, what color did you land on? It's really? like a, a light brass, so like a light brassy kind of color. Um, should, we, should we just put the test model on screen for everyone? I think yeah, we should yeah, do yeah, that now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, so it's akin to Rune Lord. Akin to Rune Lord, kind of like a Rune Lord brass kind of colour. Um, um, which obviously isn't available. Yeah, it's not, it's not a, a well, it is in, in paint. In, in paint in, in form, paint, but, not, but in, not, in um, a, not in a spray can. Not in a spray can, um, not in a primer. And, and I, th- I think, I think brass often gets overlooked when it comes to like a, an aerosol. You obviously have silvers, you have gold, you have things like that. Having like a brass colour is, is something that, was around for a bit period of time and then obviously it's not anymore but i think that having a staple brass tone allows you to do interesting things with metallics other metallic paints as well and also other aerosols like you can use use it potentially over the top of a gold and things like that so to add like highlight points and things like that so it's it's it's, it's a really useful can in my uh, i think it's specifically that it's quite a light color yeah as well which is why it works. Yeah. Brass is nice as well because you can tint it with lots of different that's what shades I mean. it's in the shadows, especially. Especially with it being a lighter color. I think yeah. that's the that's the biggest pull for me, really, is that it's like versatile. Yeah. Well, like we, we the always, wash you choose over the top is going to have a massive gonna, impact. It's going to change. You're going to get so much different. You could paint like, even when, um, obviously, not using this can or anything, but when I was doing the uh, that Underworlds warband that I was talking about, they have kind of two different sections of like a brassy type metal and it's very clearly supposed to be two different types or, or cut from two different sheets or whatever one's a bit more orangey one's mm-hmm. a bit more just like pale um and i am may i mixed like a light brass color exactly the same base color but then the wash over the top and the shading completely changes um 
how the color looks. So it can be like a fully like um, orangey copper color if you really want. Do you know yeah. what I mean? That we always say about it, it's better to start light and, and add shadow and tint to suit. And that's what this brass can or, or what we call it, which is Siege Armor. That's the name of the can. Um, that's what it allows you to do is you can put that on and then and then obviously tint it and paint other colors or filter layers over the top quite efficiently, which is which is good. Okay, so let's talk about the the color scheme that you landed on then. Mm -hmm. um, so that's on screen for everyone now. Do you want to walk us through the colors that you chose, why yeah, you did so? You, you so, had that and then you had to, the, I suppose the next big color is... Secondary. Yeah. Yeah, so having a really solid secondary color is uh, is is really helps with defining a scheme and defining obviously like a, an instantly recognizable heraldry for an outfit or for a unit or for a chapter or whatever. Um, and at first, um, I actually did try blue because I thought that the brass has got a bit of a pinky kind of reddish orangey kind of hue. So blue being a, uh, blue being a contrasting color of orange would look quite well. So I tried blue to start off with. Um, I, I think the blue looked great actually. I, I advised against the blue. Personally, no, there was a couple of reasons, but number one, um, obviously Iron Ravens was like a, yeah. a, a, a jumping off point, should we say. So I maybe thought it's probably better to like go your own path entirely mm -hmm. off yep. of that rather than like sure, have That's a callback. That's fair. Um, but one of the things, the kind of precedent that I, I the reason I really like this scheme and the reason this excites me quite a lot is... I see this as a fantastic template for creating your own marine chapter in the sense of if you just look at this model, the tester that James has painted, and you just say, oh, I'm going to substitute the green for a different color, or I'm going to substitute the black for a different color and kind of keep that template in place. Mm -hmm. You've got a radically different looking army, or even if you want to go within that, you could have like different squads with different yeah. like shoulder pad colors mm -hmm. and things like that. That, that's the that is the beauty of a, of a metallic scheme because that, that metallic armor color centralizes everything and the accents are really what add to the flavor of the chapter um but yes yeah, so I, I i tried blue to start off with and that that was more so uh purely because i said like it it was a really good contrasting card to like a red or a pink or an, or an orange and, and and yeah quite right obviously paul's arm ravens have got blue and then you, you brought up that valid point of like well look you're, tr you're trying to do a scheme which has the ease of being able to create it um it should shouldn't nod too hard to that. And I agree with you totally. Like, and that's why we then started thinking about other colors. So I tried also purple. So I'd done a, an in, inner pad lining of purple. So I thought that would be quite nice. Um, I to thought the purple actually, um, it does work. I know we settled on, on something else, but um, the purple reminded me of uh, the, uh, what's like the AOS army of the dwarves who are like flying around. Oh, uh, uh, overlord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they they have like a a coppery color with like a burgundy, Purple. yeah, yeah, and white, and mm. that's quite good. Yeah, it, um, that that was the the the, the sort of avenue I was going to go. I was going to go purple, and then the Aquila was going to be white and stuff like that. And I was thinking that could look quite cool. But um, but then we, I kind of like thought, well, I want it to look really royal. I kind of like the the look that I want for the chapter. There's a lot of reasons for that, which I'll go into. But like, I wanted a really royal look to the chapter and i thought emerald as a color just just works really well and again because it's got because the, the the siege armor has got like a almost like a pinkyish kind of like a brassy or orangey kind of tone to it that is still a contrasting color so it'd work really well based on color theory if you're a long-term listener of the podcast you'll know how important it is to have the right tools to aid you in your painting and if there's one piece of equipment that i could never live without it's my onyx lamp from native lighting it doesn't matter what brush or paints you have if you can't see what you're doing in the first place. The Onyx is the perfect lamp for miniature painting because it's super bright, 2200 lumen LEDs cast soft and diffused light on your models without any harsh shadows. And its daylight balanced color temperature of 6500K gives you the confidence that the colors you are painting are accurate. As someone with a very small hobby desk, by far my favorite feature though is its articulating arm, which clamps to the side of your desk, maximizing your workspace. It's also super adjustable so you can sit comfortably in the perfect painting position without sacrifice. It also folds up into a compact shape, which is great if you like to travel to paint with your friends. To upgrade your setup and order yours now, head to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop or head to the link in this episode's description. To give value to the listeners who are maybe trying to come up with their own color schemes, was the process literally just throwing paint on the model or was it a bit more planned out like you're looking at your color swatches? What was the sort of process for... I guess, like, I, I presume you had a lot of test models on the go at the shoulder same pads. time. Shoulder pads. Just literally just loads of shoulder pads and literally just 
started putting that color onto pads. Um, I never thought of that. I've got yeah, loads they, of shoulder pads. Cause, well, it's because because of the the body of the model is always going to be the base color you've yeah. picked. The main part where the uh, secondary color came into play was obviously the shoulder pads. So yeah. you could just have that base model with no shoulder pads on it. Paint a load of shoulder pads. And then you just replace the shoulder pads. Oh, that's pads. brilliant. I love yeah. that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Obviously, it'd take you quite a while to paint the shoulder pads. But, <laughs> yeah. um, no, it's not. Not if the listeners yeah, keep Ollie, on doing it. Ollie, <laughs> Ollie can jump in from last, the other couple of episodes yeah. ago. Um, um, but yeah, no, so so literally just interchange the shoulder pads on a model that's painted in the art in the in the Siege Arm colour. And then, um, and then and then yeah, I just, just went through different tones and colours on that basis until I got one that I thought, look, that really hits the, hits the spot of what I was thinking, you know. So that's great as well because you normally get a bunch of extra shoulder pads from kits as well. Mm -hmm. So even if you yeah. didn't have a big bits box, if you if you're doing a Marines arm in particular, even just from an intercessor kit, you can have a bunch of extra ones. Also, like if you are going into that knowing that these are just your tester shoulder pads, for example, you could probably do a couple of layers over the same set of shoulder pads. Yeah, you yeah, that's and, very true. And take some yeah. pictures each yeah, time yeah, or yeah, something yeah. like that. So yeah. even if you have two extra shoulder pads yeah um repaint them even repaint if you don't want to strip them yeah. yeah repaint them as you go in it also you, also you... works for, he for helmet color as well like for he head color like i did it's a very similar sort of thing so um i'm really seeing the value of doing this now where you've got the core color being the body and the torso and the yeah. arms and then kind of just accessorizing around it one because it's really super quick and two especially in the infancy stage where you're trying to come up with the scheme Easy yeah. to test. interchangeable a bit of blue tack on the shoulder pads yeah. helmet swapping them out even the backpack I suppose you could do yeah. as well 100% yeah it works really well uh, so that's kind of like how I settled on the overall scheme and then I, I, I wanted a, a really good uh, dark colour to contrast the rest of the because the model's inherently very bright because of the siege armour um, I then wanted to uh, all the deep main details like the gun casings the aquila like things like that. And then this is before we still start talking about sort of rank and heraldry and all this kind of things. But like, I wanted black to be a really important color in the scheme as well. Just obviously contrast the brighter armor color and also the kind of mid toned kind of emerald green that the, is the army or the chapter accent color. Um, so yeah, so then I started incorporating black, uh, onto, onto the models, uh, just to really kind of like get used to how the overall scheme would pan out on the models. In I, terms of your... Sorry, go, Joe. I was going to say, just on the note of picking secondary colours, I don't want to get too far away from it before I bring this up, but um, a potential idea, because I put it forward initially and we had a conversation and I was like, oh, actually, yeah, it probably doesn't really necessarily work for this. But I've seen a few chapters before, either like custom ones or I think there's a few legit ones that do this as well, where like the secondary colour is actually based on the company within mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. army. So, for example, the shoulder pad where on, on James's test model, let's as an example, say that in a shoulder pad color and the Aquila could actually be the company color, which that then allows you to utilize a few different color schemes or choose the one you prefer or something like that. Because I've seen a few before where um, I think actually the Marines exemplar that I brought up previously, I think not 100 percent sure. I think their Aquila is what changes color, color based on their company. So most most of the time, you see a picture, and their uh, what company is black? Uh, by the codex? That, uh, I'm I'm completely bad. I'm by that. pretty bad yeah. with it, but they they choose the black ones because black looks best on yeah. it. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, I think Imperial Fists players do it a lot because the whole the, the trim I think it's changes the, the I think it's Ultramarines. Third. Do it a lot because their trim changes with the colors. Well, so I've heard a lot of people saying that with different units in there, I'm talking for like for gaming, they'll do like different base room colors so that it's like glanceable information as to what uh, unit is what and to like denominate those. I think this would be a much more like uh, fitting in world kind of version. Exactly. Of doing yeah. That. If you really wanted to do that, like I wouldn't personally want to do too many different ones because I wouldn't want loads of different colors on the on the board. Um, but like we, we spoke before, Dark Angels obviously having Deathwing and Ravenwing. All that is, is the first company and the second company. And it's no different really to the first company of Ultramarines having white helmets instead. It's mm -hmm. just the whole armor changes color. So all it is, is a signifier of the company. And you can, when you're creating your own chapter, decide how that is signified. So you can then start to say, okay, well, the majority of where the secondary color actually is, maybe there isn't actually a secondary color, 
and that is instead the company markings so you can chop and change and and that's yeah glanceable info as to what company they're in and things like that yeah, yeah. it's really um, flexible but it didn't really work for this one because i think we were really were trying to come up with this dual color relationship yeah um, that, that's on all of them so yeah okay uh i guess if you're following along with this then so you've come up with your your color scheme you've done your test models you're happy with it what was the next step for you in terms of like law, narrative, character creation, that sort of thing? Yeah, so that is that for me uh, is a massive part of it because a color scheme is all well and good and you can create a really interesting color scheme. But I think that the beauty of specifically 40K is that it has such a rich law and narrative and I wanted to overlay that richness with the army as well. Um, so I think some key things really to like first start thinking about is like what they're like as in like the character of like the Astartes or the brothers that are in the chapter you know I think that's really important like what try type of chapter are you trying to create now put all cards on the table so this chapter is called the exemplars of siege that's what they they are named um they are a uh, all about close assaults close quarter combat and also just really really about attacking a, a target or location that's what they they focus on like they're delivering a solid blow first time that's kind of like what the chapter is about um with that that then starts you start thinking about like uh about sort of like personalities what would the chapter master be like what is, what is their mantra as a, as a as a chapter how you would then translate that to characters and add individual interesting things with the different characters that are in the, the hierarchy of the chapter and stuff like that i think that's kind of like the level that i wanted to go into it so i have like created character names i have created a little bit of backstory for each character i'm not going to go into details now but I'm, I'm going to put it somewhere that if you are interested you can read about it um but that's a really good grounding point which then kind of like starts making you kind of decide about specific things about the chapter say for example what what type of equipment do they like using which directly translates to how you're going to model the, the, the or model the armament of your characters or for your infantry you know um if they're a certain way maybe they have more terminators or maybe they have more dreadnoughts or if they're all about assaulting things and striking things then maybe they're more about fast attack or things like that so i suppose you could accessorize accessorize that kind of around your personal play style as well so if you're someone who's played a lot of games and correct particular with marines if there's a certain style that you like playing i guess catering the sort of law and narrative behind your chapter to be the thing that you like makes a lot of sense and particularly like the units you like correct yeah that's even even down to like if you don't game much even down to what you prefer painting yeah, yeah. like yeah. oh i like painting plasma weapons okay guess what the chapter that you're coming up with they love plasma weapons do you yeah, know what yeah. i mean like it's as easy as that really mm -hmm. isn't it yeah, it, it, re it really is. And I think that starts really building a good framework for you to make informed decisions about, about how you want the models to be presented, both in the way you paint them and also modeling them. You're going to invest a lot of time into doing those aspects of it. So having that rich foundation, that it, the, I think the beauty that it does for you is that whenever you buy a new unit or you want to add something to your army, that having that ground in there in the first place makes you start thinking about how you're going to make those models and the choices you're going to have. I think if you don't have that, your army is a little bit soulless, being honest, and it just doesn't have the things which will then make those choices a bit more instinctive because you spent the time creating that that backstory about them, if you follow me. Um, so I think that's quite important. I would say as well, if you're someone who potentially isn't, I mean, I know for a fact that James can like go off and completely come up with these stories on his own and, and has these very in detail visions of, oh, okay, the chapter would be like this and, chapter master would talk like this and things like that if you're not someone who can do that similar to how we started the color scheme mm -hmm. where we took a jumping off point from another chapter mm -hmm. there are hundreds of chapters mm -hmm. who have plenty of law and they have a lot of things written about them on the way they act and things like that you can quite easily use their law as a jumping mm -hmm. off point or, or something and mix like and match that. as well if there's like one thing you really like from one chapter and one thing you really like from another like there's no reason they couldn't have both exactly yeah. like yeah. even even james james just explained that they they like close combat and they focus in on a target or something like that i would assume there's quite a few chapters that have that so <laughs> yeah. you can come to these conclusions by jumping off from something else if you really want as well yeah. you can yeah. use it as a little bit of a little bit of aid and that way you don't actually have to if you're not a you know, particularly creative in that way. I know I can sit there and write the law of a chapter. Um, you can still end up at the same point where you've got all of this story to work from. Well, that, that's that's really important uh, the, that what you said as well, because the thing that what I've done with this is like, what well, when you look on Lexicanum or Wiki or whatever, you look at chapters, it will say things like, for example, their gene seed and all that kind of stuff. So what I've actually done with, with the exemplars is 
is I've made it so that it's it's redacted so that anyone that wants to play them can literally play them in whichever play style they want with it, whichever flavor that they want. And it will fit in quite nicely. Still so, fits with the law. Still fits draw, with the law. That's what I was almost, you know, what we were chatting about with the Primarchs earlier is this redacted info um, is basically a placeholder for insert your own thing here. There's Correct. no official word on that. Yeah. And and to go along with that, the other thing that, uh, that, again, touching upon the places where you can find out about chapters and things like that, some of the key things that I think really tells a bit more sort of story of the chapter is obviously where their lineage comes from, as in the, the gene seed, which obviously we've said is redacted. So you can literally tailor them however you want. Um, the other thing is like if they have a home world or something like that. So I've actually made it so they're a fleet based chapter. So if you anywhere, wherever you are in, in the galaxy of 40K playing with your mates, if you're on a campaign here or wherever, you can use them without without fail. So it means that if you you can literally say, well, there's a part of the fleet is here, you know, and stuff like that. So you can do things like that. And I wanted to, what I wanted to do with the with the kind of like combination of the fact that we've worked with Colorforge to create this this really awesome can, um, and also at the same time created the, this chapter is so that it makes it for someone that maybe doesn't want to go through the process, they can pick it up and then still start adding their flavor afterwards as well, which is what I really wanted to do with it. Do you know what I like about fleet based as well? Yep. We've spoken before about basing and how people tend to people tend to base their armies on their home world, yeah, rather than in in, in setting, combat yeah. where they would be. But a, for a fleet based chapter, pretty much any basing you can think of would make sense. Yeah, yep. And yeah. there's also other than doing like um, kind of necromundary like mm-hmm. boarding actions, ship basing. Mm-hmm. There's no real home world is there so it yeah, all yeah. is them anywhere kind of thing yeah yeah um, really that, cool. that's that's really why i i kind of like went upon setting up kind of like the head cannon about them i think those things just make it as 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 varied for people to to have a go at painting them if they want to uh without any worry or, or stipulation of oh it's got to be this way other than it being siege armor as a color scheme for the for the for the main armor color and the green at the green as the accent color Everything else, as in like you can choose for units or for style and stuff like that, is really down to you as, 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 as a player as well. So, yeah. As artists, we know how time-consuming painting miniatures is, especially if you want to achieve a high standard for tabletop or display. Life is busy, and we don't all have eight hours a day to paint. Plus, if you're still early in your painting journey, it may feel that you're a long way off ever owning your own beautiful army for your games. For 10 years, Siege Studios has been delivering bespoke miniature painting commissions to collectors and gamers all over the world. We have a world-class team of artists from Golden Demon winners to ex-studio painters, collating hundreds of years of collective experience. Here at Siege, we offer a series of painting levels and services to meet your needs and budget, whether you want a favorite character for your display or a stunning gaming army. We pride ourselves on offering well above the industry standard of quality and our customer experience. To see our gallery, learn more about our services and get a quote now, head over to siegestudios.co.uk or head to the link in this episode's description. I think one thing as well, just going back to the sort of starting point of this is if you're not like super into the law and that's not like a pillar that you particularly enjoy, I think there is a lot of value in having at least a vague setting behind it. And like you said, like maybe they just like plasma and that's like enough. But I think just to add validity to the other side as well, I don't think that it's super imperative that you have to have that law. I just think it's a nice it's a nice addition that sort of makes you think about some of the choices that you might make on the models. I don't think it needs to be this... Some people are just going to be sitting there thinking, like, oh, of course, I just want to plan a color scheme. I don't want to sit here and write a novel, which is like completely fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But equally, I think just coming up with some, some of like the rationale behind some of the choices, I think would inform some of the things. Like, for example, um, coming up with like the color schemes, how you'd extrapolate it to vehicles, um, how you might think, like, oh, where do I start with that? You could start going back to the heritage of the chapter. Yeah, yeah. So, how, how, how would you see? Uh, extrapolating this scheme on something like a tank, for example. So, so we actually spoke about this. Like when, when we had, before this even happened, and Joe was talking about a custom, custom chapter for, for so he could literally do it. it we, I we, think it was on the podcast I mentioned that I really like. Is it the inverted color scheme thing that you? Yeah, said? I like when people, especially on Marines, potentially use the secondary color as the color of the vehicle rather than the armor color. Yeah. Um, I don't know why. But I just enjoy that. Like I like that the armor is the color that the armor is, and potentially vehicles are something different. Or, or because I always see it as like I know it's, it's it seems a little bit odd, but 
but I always see the primary color where that is the um, that's the armor. It tends to be the secondary color that is like the heraldry and and stuff like that. So I kind of like the idea of displaying that on bigger panels and big vehicles and stuff. I feel like certain chapters again, maybe this is my head canon of my whatever my chapter would be, but um, they would want to display that heraldry rather than just like oh here's more armor yeah and tank do you know what i mean i feel like they would, maybe would make an effort to display things like that so and i just think visually it looks nice as well yeah i, I like that as well because i mean obviously the other army that i, I play and collect blood angels they've got gold they've got red and then they've got black for each of the respective like saint guards the gold obviously death company are black and the main rank and file are red i think that works really well both and the way you got to think of it as well is that like when you're painting an army project which is obviously has a size amount of miniatures in it you are gonna you are going to reach a point where maybe you are a bit, bit you've had enough of painting all of it in an X certain color. So the thing I really love about Dark Angels and about, about Blood Angels is that you do have all these different departments of the chapter that are resembled in different colors so that obviously it's got that heritage and whether you like the law or not or whatever, but the, the, actually when you boil it right down to the grassroots of it, which means you're not painting the same color on everything, you know, you yeah. can literally just go, okay, well, all the bikers are black because of this reason, you know, and it means I can paint the, the bikers black, etc. I think you, you can know, justify like it in a couple of ways, actually, because you could, depending on how you look at things, you could see it as the armor for like for the Marines is more functional and wouldn't be painted as such. You could almost make up that just is the color of the material. Yeah. Whereas with like a tank or a big vehicle, it would be painted to say like protected from yeah. corrosion or something. If you look at like old like historical, like, you know, literally like knights and stuff. The heraldry would always be on like the shield because it yeah. was actually painted. Yeah. The armor wasn't painted. It was armor, yeah. It was like, it, it. that is it really. Like I, I've commented before, like go way back to when we did, um, I think talking about the Strike Force Justian again, maybe that episode. I remember Paul did a chapter. More remember, factors. Yeah. Yeah. And he worked the heraldry into the color of the, chain sword mm -hmm. and I pointed out how much I liked that because I would have just painted it red or something do you know what I mean like which wasn't relevant to the the thing but it was just like a weapon casing so I like things like that like working the heraldry into weapon casings and or shields and things like you're saying like um yeah and I think vehicles come into that really yeah definitely I mean I I'm gonna be I've got to do a few tests and things on vehicles and bikes like I haven't settled on on, on whether I want them to be all the siege armor color or I want them to be like a different I think I'll probably, probably go pick and choose a bit as well can't you like depending on the vehicle that is hand, actually yeah. even more what I like and I think that I think unfortunately I'm going to have to say this but I think the Blood Angels <laughs> might be the first example where I saw of that where it was more freely like oh this is a this dreadnought is death, uh, company. death company or yeah. this dreadnought is um, librarian just normal or, or, yeah. or this dre dreadnought's a librarian and I was like oh that's really cool actually and mm -hmm. I think within um Dark Angels officially. I don't think you can necessarily do that because I guess you get Deathwing, Deathwing uh, dreadnoughts. Yeah, but I think would a dreadnought, a dreadnought show Deathwing colours. Here? Yeah, yeah, but would they? That's what I mean. I think they're always Deathwing colours. I don't think you would have one this that is, wasn't. This, this is the fun Deathwing. of coming up with your own stuff. Yeah, no exactly. one's going to fact this, this, check. This you. is what I'm getting at. But yeah, so so I've never really seen that with Dark, Dark Angels before, but I've seen it with Blood Angels. So it's like. I like that. It's yeah. like, oh, that one is this color for these reasons. That one's this color for these reasons. They're the same model but they're, they're different. You've got a few jumping dreams. off. You've got a few jumping off points with this scheme because you could do it as the, the siege armor or you could do it as the green or you could do it as the black, black. or you could incorporate more red accents or less red accents yeah. and, or Stripes. any combination. Yeah. Exactly. Or Stripes. any combination of any of those. Yeah. I don't think it's like my vehicles are all going to be this color. It's yeah. like, well, okay, my predator is going to be the siege armor and my bikes are all going to be black. Like you can yeah. do what you want, right? That's, that's exactly it. I, like I said, all those things like I, I have thought about like what I think if I'm going to set out like a data sheet of the chat, I have thought, oh, this is kind of how I'm going to lay it out, but I haven't put anything in concrete yet. Um, one thing that when we were talking about this, I was super conscious of is that I didn't want to do Blood Angels in another color scheme. That's not what the plan was with this at all whatsoever. And there are lots of things that I've done to make sure that that is not the case. So as a painter and as a hobbyist, I don't go, well, I'm just painting the same thing, but just two different armies a bit and that's I mean, yeah like, you don't yeah. want it to be brass blood angels yeah i don't want yeah. that and i've done lots of things in in various aspects of it to make sure that's not the case you, you don't know? want it to be any 
blood angel. So really <laughs> honest, there's a, there's a little worry. flavor in there, a little bit of it. But, but, but equally, no. though, again, like validity on the other side, if you're coming up with your own custom color scheme and you just want it to be like, oh, I really love the blood angels lore. I really love the blood angels backstory. I really Paint, love the aesthetic, but I don't like red. I like blue. I'm going to take, you know, the blue scheme, the background and the lore. I'm just going to make up my own like marine chapter. I think mm. that's perfectly valid. Yeah, um, but I can see why you don't want to do that because you've done a billion and one blood angels. Yeah, before. and I and I don't want to take away from that. Like I like I I you still want to paint. Blood I still angels. want to paint blood angels and enjoy them for what they are, you know, and, and enjoy that heraldry scheme richness of. I I want to I want to paint that, but I don't. I want this to be something different that allows me to have maybe a little bit of flavor of that there. But ultimately, they have their own journey to make and their own. If that makes sense. So yeah, yeah. Should we do a little just rounding off rundown mm -hmm. list? Almost a bit of a checklist um just of the points that we've covered just so that everyone can sort of work through it and yeah sure. that's how they do it so starting point was um color. coming up with the color scheme and doing base, the test yeah the main color base color yep what color do you like yep. yeah do that <laughs> start there <laughs> and, and that's a really good place to start because you're gonna have to paint a lot of it so yep. so <laughs> and then secondary color whether yep. that's complementary of color theory or just because you like it or because you've picked a more neutral starting point like a metallic coming up with that and you had the brilliant idea of the interchangeable shoulder pads for testers and mm -hmm. things like that and yeah. the helmets and backpacks like yeah. you said yeah. essentially and then number three was coming up with some head cannon if you feel like it maybe borrowing from some other chapters or coming up with your own stuff from scratch how deep you want to go on that is entirely up to you yeah um then basing you spoke about mm -hmm. uh and then finally i guess uh if you want to do law adding some yeah. more richness to it which which is it's totally up to you as as, as a hobbyist and as an individual um but and then it, extrapolating that to other parts of the army i guess and yeah. doing your companies these are all, and all inter vehicles these are all interchangeable things as well because what you enjoy painting might uh influence the law or what you like law wise exactly. might influence yeah. the painting and things like that so don't necessarily have to come up with all these ideas first and then start painting just yeah. start painting mm -hmm. yeah. um, and see what you enjoy see what stories you can come up with to fit that and things like that There's I think so this is a do. I think this is a brilliant template as well just in the way that this um, scheme is blocked out with the the knee pad and the shoulder pad and the helmet I think that that's if you're just looking at this model as a listener looking at that and saying okay well I don't like that color but I'll substitute it for this mm -hmm. and almost just like a just like filling that color with something else. Yeah. Just seeing it as a template, I think is brilliant. The the, the one area which I, I think we haven't covered, which I just want to just chuck in, um, is actually the bit which I found the hardest, which I think you both are going to know exactly what I'm going to talk about when I said this. It was actually coming up with the like the heraldry of like the chapter icon. That's something I, I've kind of missed off the list, which I do want to throw in there because I think it is very valid and very important. Um, that was probably the hardest thing for me, like trying to find something which uh, synergizes with, the, what I want to do with the chapter or what I want them to be portrayed as. And I think when I probably went through like four or five different like think, transfers and, and yeah. all this kind of, like I went through so much to try and get to the point where we're at. I think with this color scheme, you're in an awkward position where personally, I don't know about you guys, but personally I prefer the emblem, the chapter symbol to be black or white. I just like it to be, that's the, that's the color because if you're going to do it in full color that matches the heraldry, you're then either adding a color mm -hmm. that might not be present elsewhere. And I think, or, or you're just doing more of the same color that's already there. And I think black or white is nice. You're However, also limiting your choices though, because if you picked a red icon and it has to be red because that's the aesthetic, it means you couldn't put it on a red surface because you wouldn't see it. Exactly. Yeah. So, but, but the issue we'd come up with is we had the color scheme already. So then it was, working out what um, chapter symbols and things could fit on there. Yeah. And red does work um, color theory wise. Um, but there's not too much red elsewhere. I really struggled with like the transfers. Yeah. Um, black, white would have looked a little bit odd in this case because there's no white anywhere else. Um, other than maybe, I don't know what you're going to do, like veteran heads and things yeah, like that. Yeah. Like, but like white as a logo maybe wouldn't have worked that well. And black, we thought maybe it wouldn't show up too well on the on the green. Yeah, so on the darker greens, when I was testing the, the shoulder pads, I was also trying to find transfers or, or symbols for it. On the darker pads, yeah, they, they didn't show up very well. And that's why we went for more of an emerald green color. Um, Accessibility like, is also sort of part of that as well, isn't exactly, it? Because some yeah. icon, you might find an icon that you really, really like or like a combination of icons that you might like overlay and do like your own custom transfers. 
but sometimes it can be very, very hard to find inverted colors of the same transfer. So you might really, really like one particular transfer on, say, you know, the Ultramarines upgrade uh, transfer sheet, sheet yeah. but it's only in white. Yeah. And then you can't put it on a white surface or it's only in black, which doesn't show up on whatever color you've chosen. Yeah, so I, I, ex exactly. And that, that was the biggest stumbling block. And as you both know, like I, I, I spoke to both of you, I was like, I'm really struggling with this. Like um, I ended up settling on um, red chapter symbol. I, I think chapter symbol should be a bit blocky, not too, not too over the top because then that way you want it to be instantly recognized. But you've got a few factors. You've got availability of the transfer, how many you can do, how many you can get for shoulder pads and also the sizing, like finding some that are relevant for a tank and also for like a, a dreadnought and, and your shoulder pads on the thing. So I went for like um, an explosion sort of symbol, which I've not really seen used very much, which is red, which works really well. And then a chalice, which is from the sister of battle transfer sheet. Um, and then the standard tactical arrow, uh, assault arrow, devastator arrow of the symbols for the other pad, but in red from the white scar sheet. Just trying to make it as accessible as possible for people in, in variants of how many of those transfers you can get hold of to actually create create the, the chapter symbol, which is um, like a chalice on an explosion background. So, so yeah. So if you want to get your hands on the Siege Armor spray can from Colorforge, please check the description of this video. We'll have a link to the Kickstarter campaign. It goes live on the 31st of May in 2024, if you're watching in the future. And we'll also hopefully be doing a tutorial on the exemplars of Siege Army Scheme as well in the future. Yeah, we'll uh, keep you updated on that as and when, how to get it and things like that. Yeah, stay tuned to the socials and uh, I think it's a newsletter as well for the, yeah. uh, for the signature series. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Cool. Question of the week time. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week. If you have a question that you'd like us to answer on a future episode of the podcast, please leave it in the comments down below on this video if you're watching on YouTube. We have a question this week from Adam L2910, who says, I'm sat here looking at my warband that is 80% completion, and I'm using every tactic in the book to avoid finishing the project. I keep choosing to doom scroll Instagram instead of finishing it. How can I find the will to complete it? I feel like people are going to get annoyed at my, uh, <laughs> <laughs> my answers with these questions of the week. Cause they're a little bit cop out, but they are true. Um, there was one a little while ago about like, how do I know I'm not a beginner or something? And I was like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but this one, unfortunately, the only answer is to just, <laughs> just finish it. Just do it. You've just got to push yourself through it. Haven't you? There's no, there's literally no, Oh, if I do this, then I'll be in the right mindset or something like that. You just have to do it. One thing that I done quite a while ago when I was, struggling i don't want to say struggling with motivation but finding it easy to procrastinate i'll say is removing distractions from your hobby desk is a miraculous booster for productivity and by that i mean i'll no longer have i used to paint with like my ipad up watching youtube videos i find that i'd often get super distracted with that um i've done it with other things like just having your phone around laptop i used to think like oh i'll have like my reference photos up on my laptop screen on my desk and then before you know it you check in emails so I think removing, you say you're doom scrolling on Instagram, but like don't have your phone. If you know that you're going to be doing that when you go to paint, wherever your hobby space is, wherever your desk set up is, or your, you know, if you're fortunate enough to have a dedicated space for it, whatever your scenario is, removing those distractions from arm's reach will force you to get on with stuff. Um, one thing that I've done is switching to just listening to music or audio books and just putting my headphones in and I'll even like literally chuck my phone on the other side of the room. I've got it playing. I know I don't want it within arm's reach. And that's been a massive uh, booster of productivity, I suppose. I completely agree with both your points. They're extremely valid. One, just do it. Unfortunately, that is the answer. And two, yeah, every distraction. But for me, I think the, the thing that I'd like to throw into the ring is set a goal. I think that will help you massively to get across the slog to reach something that you want to do. And I think doom scrolling on Instagram or on any platform to find something else um, is just a distraction from you actually tackling it to then get onto the next. You're, you're searching or trying to find the next exciting thing. And I, and I think I feel like it's they're 80, sorry, they're 80% along the way. I don't yeah. think this is a goal setting issue or a slog issue. No, either. but what I mean they're is looking at the finish line. Yeah, yeah. it's right there. They're, they're done the slog. Percent, yeah, they're they're done the slog. But what I mean is like, if you've got, we've all got piles of grey shame. Uh, and if you haven't, then hats off to you. But if you have, then I would pick something within that that you're super keen to do and start, be it a new project, be it a new model, whatever. And just say to yourself, look, I'm going to 
that is my reward for getting it across the finish line. Like if I get this last 20% or however much it is done, then once I've done that, I can then start that thing because I've, as a reward for completing this thing, which has been a bit of a slog for you. I think you kind of need that to then push yourself. I suppose you could say like, even though they have done the slog and they are, as they say, 80% complete, if you do set a digestible, like cheap win of like, okay, if I, if I paint tonight, I'm going to remove all distractions and I just want to get the leather finished, or I just want to get these pouches finished, or I just want to get this bit of cloth finished. Or one thing that you could do is uh, if they're, if there's a whole war band and they're all 80% completed, just focus on one model and finish that off. And having a finished model will, might motivate you to paint the rest. And it will give you like a nice sense of satisfaction if you can see something finished, it can give you something to compare the other models to as well, potentially. I'm going to just play devil's advocate on one last bit of this question. And that is that unless it depends what the reason of getting this finished is if this is purely just having fun painting wanting it finished and there's no strict deadline it's not a commission it's not i need it finished for this competition i need it finished for this gaming weekend because i would argue you necessarily don't even need it finished if you're 80 percent along the way you're probably good to game with it um so if it's purely just an enjoyment thing if you have to lock your phone away, not allow yourself to look at a laptop, um, berate yourself into just finishing it and things like this, probably just paint something else for the time being and come back to it. Like if there's nothing riding on you finishing it next week versus in two months, just enjoy, like you're going to paint more if you're enjoying what you're painting and you'll get the bug to finish it eventually. That is valid. That yeah, is also that's valid. That's what I would say and as well gaming or playing with something that is 80% finished is probably a lot further on from what a lot of people potentially game or play with. So Most you're, you're, people will think it's finished. I'm just yeah. going to throw that out there. If you're yeah, 80% of along the way. Yeah. Um, Unless it's literally like starting from the bottom up. They've got to just <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, then most people will think, oh, he's, you know, done a lot or whatever. Or yeah. they've, they've done a lot. Um, Re-establish what finished really means and just say 80% is just done. Yeah. That's 100 Eight, so yeah, say you work on the eighty twenty rule. And <laughs> that is finished, done. Yeah, yeah. Hobby hacks. This is our closing weekly tradition on the show. If you do not normally make it to the end of these episodes, then please remember that we do give away little tips at the end of every single one. So please do listen to the end. Uh, James has got a little hack for us this week. I think I most certainly do, uh, and it's tailored to creating your own chapter as well so as i mentioned i used two different transfers to make the chapter symbol for this so i used like a explosion symbol and then the chalice um that is not a transfer which you can just get off any sheet you have to obviously use multiple transfers and layering transfers is the hobby hack for this week that I, I don't know whether lots of people have done it before or know about it but it's something that can be really effective to create new symbols with pre-existing transfers and give you something a little bit fresh and personalized for yourself um, so, so yeah, so I, I obviously put on the first transfer as per normal with like Microsoft, Microsoft, that's the thing that I normally use to them with transfers. Um, and then chose the secondary transfer, layered that on over the top of the first one, uh, and then revarnished it all down together. And it, at all intents and purposes, looks like one symbol that was made out of multiple transfers. So obviously you get this a lot with. Um, squad numbers mm -hmm. on the the right shoulder pad a mm -hmm. lot. It'll have the symbol and then it'll have the number. That is obviously layering transfers, mm -hmm. right? I had never once have thought of oh, you can create your own chapter symbol by layering a transfer. Do you want to take it a step further? You can hack up transfers. I was and about if there's to say, a bit that you like from a transfer, but you don't like the rest of it, but you like part of another transfer. Yeah, you can do this sort of. For example, one thing that's really common is say there's like a skull and it's got like say like a halo around it or something you could cut just the skull out and then put it on a different transfer where maybe it was one shape with another shape around it and you didn't like that one or you cut yeah. it exactly in half. So something like that. I do just want to clarify that I was about to say that before I was interrupted. So <laughs> next time <laughs> next time George comes at me for never giving anything in a hobby hack, um, if everyone can memorize this timestamp and comment it, yeah. that'd, be, that'd be lovely, please. That'd be half a hack. That's yeah. what you've got this week. I think we've actually done that before on... A commission. Oh, I can't remember. I feel like Adam did something where that double like, transfer, like, yeah. like, like not, welded two transfers together. Yeah, yeah. Like, we must be on the same wavelength at the minute, actually, because when I was doing my Blood Angels uh, over the weekend, you started painting them green. Yeah, exactly that. No, uh, <laughs> I was trying to come up with some transfers because some of my Stone Guard veterans have the sculpted thing on the knee, and some of them don't. And I thought, oh, I'll put a transfer on it. 
but I couldn't find a stone guard transfer, but I could find the cross and the skull. So I just made my own. And I thought it'd be cool to do a contrast in color. So instead of doing the same, uh, it was like a white cross. Instead of doing a white skull with it, done a black skull. Thought I'd mix it up. That's good. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I was about to say that as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On that note, thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of Paint Perspective. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so in a number of ways. Please check the links in the description of this episode for the Kickstarter for the Siege Armor Spray Can and also links to our Patreon where you can support the podcast. We have tiers just for you podcast listeners if you just want to uh, see it as a monthly contribution or if you want to gain access to all of our PDF tutorials that we uh, spoke about in the ad reads earlier in the show. And also please become a member of the Discord and engage with the community over there. We look forward to speaking with you. Thank you, everyone. We will catch you next week. 